I was born in a uh, fairly small town, Kankakee, Illinois, about 50 miles south of um, Chicago. Uh, a normal kind of home life. I had one brother, one sister, and grew up there. Went to Illinois State University, and um, after six years, left Illinois State <laughs> University. Had a bachelor's degree, didn't finish the master's degree. Uh, met my wife down there uh, my senior year, and uh, got married 16 months later. Uh, my first job out of college was in Bloomington for an agriculture company down there. Did that for two years, and then when uh, the grandchildren started coming, we decided to move up into the Chicago area because my wife is from the south side of Chicago. So that way, the both grand, sets of grandparents would be close to their grandchildren. Worked for two years for Wendy's International, the hamburger chain. I left there, went into the beauty supply business, which was an interesting uh, little over a year I spent there. Then five years with Burger King Corporation here in Chicago uh, as the human resource manager for the Chicago market. And then I joined the National Association of Realtors almost 15 years ago. Nine children. The oldest is 22. The youngest is three. We uh, met a couple at, uh, at a parish that we had joined. And they were wonderful people, very um, humanly attractive people, especially the wife. And they had four or five kids and typical rambunctious kids and climbing all over the place. And the wife just always seemed so peaceful. And she never seemed the least bit anxious about all, all the cast. And my wife said, I have to meet that lady. I have to find out what her secret is. I don't, maybe she's drinking before she comes to church or on Sunday or something because she's just... And so she got to meet her, developed a friendship, and uh, then we developed a friendship as a couple. And... Um, the wife invited my wife to uh, some formation evenings of recollection, and the uh, husband invited me to an evening of recollection. And that was it. I attended my first evening of recollection, and I said, I will never miss another one of these as long as I live. It was just a tremendous experience for me. I was one of those kids in college who had no idea what I wanted to be when I grew up. I had six different majors. I dropped out of college for a year to find myself, didn't find myself, ended up going back to school. Got to my senior year, I had more hours of credit in psychology than anything else, so I declared a psychology major, graduated. But I really, I, I, you know, I always wanted to work in, an era, in a profession I thought was kind of a Christian profession. And so a major like business or accounting or finance or economics seemed unchristian somehow. And so I really struggled with what should I do, what kind of job can combine Christian values with the need to make money and support yourself and raise a family. And I struggled with that. And eight years after college, I went to my first evening of recollection and heard a priest talk about sanctifying ordinary life, right, right where you are, that any job you have can be a path to holiness. And it was like I got hit in the head with a big boulder. It's like, well, of course that makes sense. Why didn't I figure that out? It was very interesting. Shirley uh, converted to Catholicism when we got married. She was raised a Lutheran. And so I was very protective of, of her and her faith. And these friends of ours, uh, uh, the wife was uh, doing a series of doctrine classes and invited Shirley to come to the doctrine classes. And I'd never heard of a lay person doing doctrine classes before. And so I was pretty skeptical of what they were really going to be, you know, talking about. And so she came, off, come, came home after the first doctrine class with all kinds of great information. I said, well, maybe. So I gave her some questions to ask on the second doctrine class to see if they were really very solid and, and, you know, and loyal to Rome and faithful to, to the teachings of, um, of Rome. And she came home with all the right answers. And I said, well, this is probably pretty good. And she came and said, listen, I want to join Opus Dei. And I said, oh, no way. Now, you're going, you know, this, I don't know anything about Opus Dei. I haven't even heard of Opus Dei. Let's not get carried away here. Six months later, I joined Opus Dei, and she still hadn't done it. So I ended up joining before her, and she wasn't real happy about that. But anyway, she joined a few months after I did. And the kids? Our oldest daughter, the one who's uh, 22, is a numerary. She joined Opus Dei as, as a numerary uh, right out of high school and is now living in New York. In fact, was just home this past weekend, and I dropped her off at the airport this morning. And she's just extremely happy. I mean, she smiles all the time. She's just wonderfully happy with her life and her job, her career, and, and everything and with her vocation. How did you react to that? Well, I was, you know, I, I was surprised. My wife was not. She said, oh, I always thought she'd be a, be a numerary. I didn't, I didn't see it coming with this one. I thought maybe some of the others, but not this one. I think it's wonderful. I think that, you know, if you're doing what God wants you to do, 
it's a beautiful thing, and you're going to be very happy, whatever that is. I learned a long time ago to let God figure out what's the right course, and not me. And I'm not smarter than God on this stuff. And so, I, you know, what I asked her was, did you pray about this? You know, why did you decide this is the right thing? How did you come to this realization, and did you pray about it? And yet, that I prayed a lot about it, and we talked about that. And I've always said we've always worked very hard to have very good open communication with our children. And we talk about anything and everything. And so we had wonderful conversations about it. And I prayed about it as well. And so I'm, I, I couldn't be happier for her. It's like anything else you love. You want everyone else to love it as well. So I want everybody in the world to love my wife because I love her. And some people may not think she's all that great. And that would trouble me if someone said, geez, your wife is not too cool. So, sure, I love Opus Day, and I would like everybody to love Opus Day, but that's not going to happen. So, so be it. I mean, it is what it is. Uh, people write, write books like The Da Vinci Code, and I think, I think reasonable and discerning people will appreciate the fact that it's a work of fiction and, and leave it at that, and other people perhaps won't. I think at the root of the misunderstanding about Opus Day and, and true Catholicism, I think Roman Catholicism, is just is just lack of information. People really don't know. They, they, they really haven't studied it. They haven't researched it. And conversations, perhaps, that I'll get into with people about um, uh, artificial contraception. And I'll say, well, have you read Humanae Vitae? Well, no. Why would I want to read that? Well, that's the church's official teaching document on artificial contraception. So if you're going to be opposed to the church's doctrine, you ought to at least know what the doctrine is, as opposed to say, well, I just don't like it. So, and I think that's the case with Opus Dei. I think a lot of I, I think a lot of people criticize it. Just don't just don't know it. And and I was talking to a, a parish priest once, and I said, Well, l l let me tell you what my life is like. And you stop me when I get to a point where you think there's something wrong with what I'm doing. All right. So I go to daily mass. You okay with that? Well, that's a good idea. All right. I say a rosary every day. Well, that's okay. Uh, spiritual reading, 15 minutes every day. Read the New Testament. You okay with that? Yeah. Well, that's a good idea. Uh, metal prayer, is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. And I, I, so I went through the whole kind of plan of life that we live in Opus Dei. And he thought everything I was doing was a really good idea. So I said, well, then why don't you think Opus Dei is a good thing? Because this is, this is Opus Dei. It's what it teaches. So I, I think once people really understand what Opus Dei is, it's pretty hard not to love it. Now, it may not be your cup of tea, and that's okay, of course. But it would be hard to criticize what Opus Dei stands for if you really know what Opus Dei is all about. I think so. Yeah, but, but we're still a real family. I mean, I still have kids who are knuckleheads sometimes, and I still lose my temper occasionally and explain to them exactly why I'm mad at them. You know, and I, we're as normal a family, I think, as you would find anywhere, but we take our faith seriously. And, but other than that, I mean, I, I have kids who don't really do well in school. I have kids who don't like school. I have kids who love school. I have, you name it. I have kids with senses of humor and kids who kind of have a chip on I got the whole spectrum. You got, I got it all. So I think if you, if you just, you know, were a fly on the wall in our house, you wouldn't notice anything different about us than any other family. I, hopefully we'd be a little more cheerful and we'd get along a little bit better than any other family. But we don't walk around with rosary beads in our fingers and our hands folded all day long. That's not what life is like in Hindu household. So you haven't reached sainthood yet? No, ma'am. When's it going to happen? Well, I, well <laughs> the day I die. You've been at this yeah, for quite a the while. The day I die. I, you know, I, uh, I thought about that as I was driving over here. And I am a long way away from sainthood, but I'm never too far away from the confessional. And that's, you know, and that's... And uh, Saint Escriva said that. I mean, a saint is a guy who keeps getting up after a fall. And I'm, I'm as human as anybody else. And I have all kinds of. You could ask my wife. A few flaws, all kinds of, and uh, which is why I go to confession every week. I mean, I I need that. I need that grace and I need that forgiveness because I haven't gone through a perfect day yet that I'm aware of. So, it's the way it goes.